from distant lands across the billowing sea. They came to rest, they saw the best, they conquered history. They sailed no more to distant shore, but in Chesapeake it's Feel the wind arising from the east across the bay. Although the winds do blow from Maine to Mexico, we reap the ocean's bounty and we not so hard to go. Freddie, before we unload that, go and ask Carol what I quoted this morning for Jumbo Soft Crab. It's in the book. Okay. Morning, Ted. Let's go. Ah! 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 Hey, save a few ribs for Picky, will you? Twelve and a quarter, John. Twelve and a quarter. Okay. Hey, these mine? Yeah, but yours and uh, half my other customers' crabs aren't in yet. All my crabbers have been stopping across the street at Magnum before they see me. Magnum's going into crabs? Yeah. Sam's working for them. Your brother? He's back in the business? What's the difference? Look, all those crabbers are whores anyway. Someone throws a dollar more down on the street, and then they beat each other's brains out to get to it. See? Look, there goes another one. Now, your crabs are supposed to be in that truck. Teddy, you want crabs? You better buy them with Magnum this morning. As a matter of fact, they're underselling me by a couple of bucks. Hey. Hey, I only deal with the best. I wouldn't sell you a crab anyway. You still owe me 10 that I took from you last week. Yeah, maybe I'll just take it right back, huh? Come on, double or nothing. Oh, the Irishman feels lucky. Come huh? on, come on. Gene Gray! A do it! And... What the... <laughs> I win, baby. No more crabs till I get my 20. One more time, Daddy. No one more time. 20. Thank you. Freddy! Yeah, John. Coffee and some buns, huh? Come on, I'll take you back to Carol, get the paperwork done, but though I doubt it, you know what I mean? She's always yapping on the phone. Yeah? Well, maybe I'll just bite her on the neck for encouragement. I'm too hard to never start working. Hey, did I tell you Charlene's coming next week? Hey, that's great. It's Carol looking out, Sam. Yeah, pretty as an angel. Yeah, I try to get up for Mom and Pop's anniversary party, but uh, you know Betty. No, and I don't want to know Betty. Come here. Come here. Oh, 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 my little guy. I got one to do. John, what a sweet song. Johnny, oh, if you want to get back oh, with the right paperwork, you better put me down. Just a kiss. Just a Johnny, please. Please. just put me down. Please. Quick. Johnny, when you, you put it down, you know I can't run this place without her. She knows all my secrets. John, how are you? You better get out there. Matthews is in. It's about time he got his can in here. Yeah? Well, you don't want it. Huh? What do you mean, I don't want it? Why are you smelling? That's all I need is a truckload of dead crabs. What do you say, Mr. Matthews? Uh, morning, Johnny. Yeah. Have a little problem over there beyond the tunnel, but I made it. How long has the cooler been out? 
Like I said, you know, I, I come off the interstate, stopped in for a cup of coffee, and when I come outside, the damn thing, it, it went out. Hey, you seen him dance that song, too? Hey, now, wait a minute, Johnny. That's the way it happened. I don't want him. Hey, look, only you wanted them crabs here. Hey, look, half your product is dead. That unit's been out for at least 24 hours. Now, why the hell didn't you ice them? Now, look, you ordered them crabs, and I want my money. You hope Billy's will never die. Would you call me? Hey, come on, Mr. Matthews. Get out of the way. I want my money. Oh, you. Hey, Joe. Come at him. Come on. Hit him, Johnny. Hey, come on. Get him. All right, Johnny. Way to go. Anybody want any crabs? You can have the whole truck load. Come in. Mr. Trumbull? This is Mr. Vernon Matthews from Crisfield, Maryland. I already told him we want his crabs. My pleasure, Mr. Matthews. Why would you buy a truckload of dead crabs? Well, it's a gesture, Mr. Matthews. You're one of the biggest crab runners on the East Coast. I want to handle every crab you haul. To show my good faith, I'll absorb your loss this time. Now, what makes you think you can do anything with crabs against a campana? Magnum will be number one in crabs, Mr. Matthews. How? By buying a truckload of dead crabs? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Trumbull, but uh, you don't impress me. I have someone working for me I think you ought to talk to. He knows a lot about crabs. Nobody knows more about crabs than Johnny Campana. He's king crab. Sam! Sam! Vernon, how you been? Well, how you been? I'm all right. When would you get back in the market? Oh, about two, three weeks ago. Are you, uh, really working for this outfit? Yes, I am, Vernon. I hear Sam's at least as good as his brother. Some say better. Well, some say. What do you say, Mr. Matthews? All right. If Sam's in, I'm in. Welcome aboard, my friend. <laughs> Mr. Matthew? Here you go, Vicky. Oh, thanks, Susie, for picking this stuff up. Welcome. Hi, Mom. Come on, Vicky. I'm going to show you how to open clam. Like this minute. <clears throat> Now, look, you put the knife here, and then you squeeze like you're shaking hands, only it's with the left hand. Right. And then you cut one muscle, the other muscle, and you lift off the top. It's easy, huh? Like magic. Here, you try. All right. No, 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 not there. Here. I'm going to stick the knife in. Ah, oh, Vicky. Oh, my dear. Oh, bandage, bandage. I used to know where everything was in this house until you went and changed everything around. A new broom sweeps clean, Mom. Just in Nick. No, you'll have to learn how to open clams, Vicky. No Italian kitchen is complete without somebody who knows how to open clams. Johnny knows. You have to know. In the same way that you have to go to Father Kelly's classes and learn about the Catholic religion. I have no plans of converting. Or well, not for yourself, perhaps. But when there are children. Johnny and I have no plans for children. You. You're a young woman. My son needs children. We have Charlene every summer and one weekend each month. She's a wonderful little girl and I love her a lot. A home is not a home without children. Look, Mama, Johnny and I are just getting used to each other. Now, that's the most important thing. Now, how long does it take to cook these clams? Oh, just kiss them with the flame. Just a kiss? Well, why don't we wait just before dinner? Susan, Johnny's been bragging about your wonderful salad. So, okay, uh, sure. The bowls are right here in this cabinet. Sure. Everything you need is in the fridge. Mom, I got some dough that needs working. Yeah, if you don't oh, mind. Sure. Good. Great. Yeah. There he is with his computer. Where's Pop? Yeah. In the back room. Yeah. You'd think this one day he'd lay off the dice. Well, so? So how do you computerize a soft crab? Let's keep business out of today, huh? Just curious. Here. Come on, have a nice time. 
How long has he been in there? Yeah, like forever. Here. Okay, frozen crab shop. I can see that. You can computerize a frozen crab. So many boxes, so many customers, so many trucks. One, two, three. Pow. But how do you do it with fresh crabs? Same way you do it with fresh oysters. You no, know, Mr. Oyster, he'll carry maybe a week, ten days, but a fresh, soft crab, it takes three days from a shedding tank to somebody's stomach. You hold them another day, you're in the hard crab business. You're thinking right, John. Yeah, I know I am. Pop loves the way you think. It's just like he thinks. How does Lucien think? <laughs> you know, I love that name. Lucien. It's Lucien. Does Lucien think like you? Don't underestimate him. Oh, I hear he came over from the dog food division. That's right, and when he left, the dog food division was the number one profit center in Magnum. I can see that. So many cans, so many trucks, so many customers, so many bucks. Even if he stays with frozen product, like shrimp or lobster tail, even soft crabs, I can see him making Magnum an even bigger, what was that, profit center in the dog food division. But fresh, soft crabs, he's gonna take a bath. Lucian's not gonna do it. I am. Let's go get Pop. And do me a favor, stay here, will you please? You make him nervous. You have another oyster. What's the matter with you? You're like a dog I once had. He never listened to me either. When I say five, I want five. Oh, All right. Five, five, five. This is going to be it. Five. 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 All right. Three. Three. What is this? The dog has come back again. Am I going to have to tell you what I did to that other dog? Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Lay on another hundred. Lay on another hundred. All right. Come on. Cover this. Cover this. This dog is going to sleep off tonight. Come on. Come on. Five. 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 Oh, boy. Sorry, fellas. Throw him back. Good dog, good dog. I'm going to take What? You're hungry? Oh, fellas. I'm sorry. i got to go. i got to feed Rover, huh? All right. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's all yours, fellas. All yours. Take it away. Take it away. Good luck. Good luck. Ah, there they are. Hey, crack an oyster for your old man, John. Here you go, Pop. That's all right. You eat it. John will crack me one. <laughs> Take all their money, Pop? Oh. Mm. I left them cough there. <laughs> That's not bad. Jennifer, bring me some of that special sauce. Sure, huh? Pop, you kill the oyster with that stuff. Shut up and crack me another one. So, oh, Sam, my son. How's the job? Are you uh, using all that education that you keep saying I wasted money on? What did you send me to college for? <laughs> so I could say my boy Sam is at college. Yeah, and didn't it ever occur to you that I just might learn something there? Yeah, but, uh, come on, Jenny, where's the sword? I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, yeah, I thought you might learn when to wear a tie and when not to. There you go. Ah, ah, there's my sweetheart. Thank you. What does wearing a tie have to do with an education? Not wearing a tie, when to wear a tie. <laughs> when you're a banker, you dress like a banker. More important, you think like a banker. You want to survive in this market, you've got to think like people who handle fish. There's an old Italian saying, o la cravata, o la vita pesci vendaro. You want to be a good fishmonger? Take off the tie. When you learn what that means, then you'll be an educated man. <laughs> You ought to teach logic, Pop. That's good. That's good. Hmm. Listen, I want to get serious for a moment. I want your mother to have a lot of good memories from this afternoon for a long, long time. I'm even going to wear a tie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know we've got our differences here. But this afternoon, we're one family. You understand? You got anything to say? I want you to get it out of your system right now. You leave it right here. Pop, I don't know what you're talking about. I love my brother. And he loves me. Just like the good book says. Don't you, Sam? Just like Abel loved Cain. <laughs> oh, everybody, get in the den. Hey, oh, oh, right. oh, right. oh, oh, right. oh, great job here. Oh, come on.
I got enough pills to blow the city off the map. Just like my wedding night. Hey, you better watch out tonight. No, not this time. I'd like to propose a toast. All right, all right. To my mother and father. The years roll by, but it's as good now as it's always been to have you as parents. Thank you for all those years and many more to come. To mom and pop. Oh. Oh. Mom and pop. Grazie. 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 Now, mom and pop, Johnny and I, I have a surprise for you. Well, I want you to stand right there. <laughs> now, close your eyes and pretend that you are in the opera house in Milan. <laughs> and this is what you hear. Don't you have something to say? Yeah, um, Susan and I have a kind of surprise for you, too. You tell them. I'm pregnant. <gasps> oh. 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 I wondered why you went with Lucian. Well, that's not why. Well, what's that? You're hoping to get promoted into the dog food division? Magnum is so much bigger than you could ever imagine. We're the world's third largest producer of fiberglass resins. Third in the world. Not just this country. The world. So why do they want to get into crabs? Well, we don't think of products the same way you do, John. I mean, it could be anything. It could be anchovies, petrochemicals, coal, zinc. The product doesn't matter because we deal in units. We deal in markets. We deal in trends. Hey, Bob, you listening? How do you eat a unit? My customers come to me, they want crabs, not units. <laughs> Stop picking on your brother, John. I'm proud that he knows about so many things. He doesn't know about things. Anchovies, coal, zinc. He knows about units. The next time I'm in the market, I'm going to order a half a dozen units on the ham shell. <laughs> yeah, they're especially good with tartar sauce. <laughs> hey, Sam, so tell me. You take all these units, you jam them into a computer, and you sit there while the machine tells you what to do with them. Just like that, John. Who's ready for another unit of champagne? Why do you tease your son? Mom, Sam's a big boy now. We're very proud of him over there. Trying to put us out of business, aren't we, Pop? You never know when to stop, do you? Well, isn't that what you're trying to do? Turkey cut the cake. Hmm? If you only knew why I went with Magnum. Because you're stupid, that's why. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You promised me. Vicky. Cut the cake. No, I wouldn't need another crumb in this house. Come on, Susan. Oh, Susan, oh, we're Sam. Leaving. Hey, Johnny, do something. Sam, Sam, I'm, I'm sorry. Stop it, Mr. King Crab. Let's just see how long you keep your crown. Look, I told you I'm so. Sam, don't come back here. I want to go home, my God. For the love of. All right, all right, Vicky. Under the circumstances, we better go. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you for the food, everything. I'll talk to you later. as I never heard of. Is our credit policy still the same, Mr. Trumbull? Treat them like they own the bank, Otto. Magnum wants our share of the market climbing steady as she goes. Morning, Mr. Trumbull. Morning, Richard.
more buyers we have, the more we're able to control the market. Uh, Johnny's a little late this morning. Family had an anniversary party for Mr. and Mrs. Campana yesterday. How is he, old man? He still drinks creme de mint for breakfast. And red wine for lunch. Why, when was his last heart attack? <laughs> Three months ago. Campana's gonna be tough to bring down. Yeah, that's the kind I like. Who is that Sam's talking to? Some character from South Carolina wants to sell us soft crabs. Well, word's getting around. Have you thought this Campana business through? All the way to the bank. Campana against Campana. Somehow it don't go down right. We didn't drag Sam over here. He came to me with his own free will. Laid out his proposal, said if I'd bankroll him, he'd make Magnum number one in soft crabs. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Mr. Trumbull. Are we going to handle that Carolinian's crabs? Well, South Carolina is a relatively new area for soft crabs. No book on it. So I told him if he wants to ship to us on consignment, OK, but no contract. Well, I laid it out to Magnum, just like you laid it out to me, Sam. We take 5% of Johnny's production by next month, then 10%, then 20 By the end of the season, you'll have a contract. And Magnum will wear the soft crab crown in this market. Jumbo, it's just uh, four boxes. That's enough for Alan. Break the box. Enough of that. Let the sleepy one sleep. I'm just trying to say good morning to them, Alan. Lift the tray. Are you running for president, Alan? You want to shake hands with every crab? Just the left-handed ones. OK. Ready? Yeah, John. You'll help him load up, huh? You bet. Get it. Tommy, can I talk to you a second? Sure. <laughs> How come you showed me 10 boxes of jumbos? You know how it goes. And how come you walked across the street first before you came over to see me? From Lord of the Crabs. I see. So you short me, you take on a guy who knows zip about your product. I don't have a contract with you. You gave me a hell of a price. I could have sold him the whole truck. Do you know how many hard crabs you got for me? Three bushels. Three. Hey, I ordered 50 bushels. Would you have paid me $25 for female crabs? You're some comedian, aren't you? That's what they're paying across the street. What am I going to do? Sell them to you for 18 for... For old time's sake? Tommy, for old time's sake, you'd at least picked up a phone and give me a call. For old time's sake, you get three bushels for 17. You get nothing tomorrow unless you meet the price. Look, Mr. Coleman, in order to stay in business, the guy has to make a profit, right? Mm -hmm. Trumbull can't possibly sell those crabs for what? Maybe 20? I mean, $22 tops. That means he's going to lose $3 in a basket. You stick with me, you're all going to make some money. You go in with that bum over there, and everybody takes a bat, especially you. Now, how about it? Do I get those 50 bushels of female crabs tomorrow morning or not? You better this price, you get the crabs. Good luck, Mr. Coleman. Good morning, John. Hey, Floyd Redmond. What you doing in the market? I'm looking for a contract. Well, I'm listening. Come on in. We've got a new operation going down in South Carolina, and I think it's going to be big. You're not shedding crabs in Virginia anymore? That storm we had in the middle of soft crab season last summer tore my shed and house all to pieces. So when the season ended last September, I went looking for a new place to shed crabs. I'm operating out of South Carolina, 200 miles below that whole Cape Hatteras weather system. What kind of production you got? A hundred dozen a day of the prettiest jumbo crabs you ever laid eyes on. Now, there are others down there who want to get in on this. We formed a sort of cooperative. We can ship you 50 boxes a day. How many crabs would bust the hell out of this market, wouldn't it? That's why we haven't been shipping. We're freezing everything we shed. But you haven't heard the best part. We can start shipping. Are you ready? We can start shipping in February. Well, that's two months before the regular season. What do you want? A contract to handle everything you ship. It's too late in the season for that larger commitment, Floyd. I'd have to cut somebody out, and I just won't do that. And besides, you know, your crabs might dry up tomorrow, and uh, where's that going to leave me? I'm sure that Sam told you the same thing, didn't he? I know you went across the street. You didn't get a contract, and that's why you're talking to me. I'll tell you what. 
You freeze and hold everything you get out of Carolina this year, and I'll buy them for the mean market price of last year. That's seven for jumbos, five for primes, three and a half for hotels. Then next year, we start early, and we wipe out the entire market. Deal? Deal. Hello? No, Mr. Campana's not home. This is Mrs. Campana. Accept the charges. Who are they from? Charlene Campana, sure. Sure, I'll accept him. Hi, honey. How are you? Vicky, is my daddy there? No, sweetheart. He's at work. Nothing's happened, has it? I can't come for the summer. What do you mean? Why? We were expecting to see you real soon. Something about a court order. Well, honey, uh, when did all this happen? Just this week, I think. I was getting all ready to go when school lets out. And then they told me I couldn't go. Can't you do something? I want to see my daddy. Charlene, sweetheart, now just calm down. I'll, I'll call your father right away and we'll work something out. I promise you, don't you worry about a thing. Will you tell him to call me and tell me what's going to happen? Yes, sweetheart. I will have him call you right away. Charlene? 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 Who are you talking to? I called my daddy. You go get dressed so I can drive you to school, and don't you ever pull a trick like this again. Look out. Coming through. Hold it, hold it. John. Yeah. John. What kind of ticket do you got on crabs today? 20. Hey, you know what they're selling for across the street? Yeah, I know, I know. 18. It's, uh, it's beginning to get tempting, John. Hey, look, you want to haul garbage, be my guest. My price is 20, okay? So I paid a 20. Cry yeah. all the way home. Johnny, telephone. I'm busy. Get their name. It's Vicky. Tell her I'll call her back. She says it's an emergency. What's the matter, Vicky? House on fire or something? I just got a call from Charlene. Oh, yeah? Your darling ex-wife has gone to court and gotten some kind of order, and Charlene is not coming for the summer. She's not coming? Well, that's all I can tell you right now. The phone went dead right in the middle of the conversation. I don't know what happened. I think her mother caught her or something. She just disappeared. I'll kill that woman. How can she do that? Did she just go to court without telling you anything? They probably sent me a notice, but I guess I misplaced it. And they publish it in some dinky paper that no one reads. What a screwed up legal system. Vicky, I'm gonna go down there. Call the airport and book me on the first flight out of here. I have had it. Shipping tickets. Freddy, how many times do I have to beat into your head the importance of those tickets? I mean, anyone getting hold of them knows who I'm selling to and at what price. Don't you understand? It gives them an edge in underselling us. I'll lay you any amount of money, Freddy, that in five minutes those tickets are going to be in Lucian Trumbull's desk. Hey, John, I, I didn't see him. Okay. If you happen to see that kid again, do me a favor, will you? Just get your hook and hit him upside of his head. Yeah, okay. Going around the corner, I'll be back in five minutes. Good morning, Pop. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Why do you insist on getting up so early every morning and coming down here? What, do you want me to live like a woman? Get up in the middle of the day, I have to take a shower at 12 just to stay awake? Before I left the house, I had two pages written on my history of the crabbing industry. How's things at the store? What's the weather off Hatteras? It's clear as a bell, Pop. But there's a storm brewing down the street. Magnum is taking dead aim at us. They're buying high, they're selling low, they're really shaking the trees. My customers are yelling, price, price, price. Sam is using everything he ever learned here against us. I'll tell you, of all the things that happen in this crazy life, Sam's going with Magnum. Ah, that hit me the worst. Gotta find a way to get him back, John. They even sent a kid over here this morning to steal the shipping tickets off the boxes. And what am I gonna say? I mean, that's how I got started. <laughs> that you did. I remember when old man Carmella got hold of you. We had to send three journeymen down there oh. just to get you back. What a brawl that was, huh? <laughs> oh. Hey, you didn't come over here to talk about your troubles in the business. What's really on your mind? Well, Charlene called Vicky this morning. Betty got a court order. She's gonna stop the kid from visiting us this summer. Uh, 
Pop, I'm gonna go down there and raise hell straight. I better call Uncle Louie. I haven't come over here and mind the place. What, Uncle Louie? Who are you looking at here? You ask me. You don't have to ask me. The doctor told you you've got to stay away from the pressure of the business. I stayed away too long. John, I'm strong as a gorilla. I'm twice as mean. I'm gonna be over there as soon as I finish the breakfast. Get out of here. Can I talk to you about something? What? Well, Carol told me about you having to go out of town and all. You need someone to run the place for you while you're gone. Well, what are you talking about? Well, I was wondering if I could, you know, kind of be in charge. I mean, after two years, I know your system pretty good and all. And you let a 12-year-old kid get away with the prices. Honest, John, I, I didn't even see him. No, look, kid. Right now, I'd even be willing to let Carol be in charge if she was ready. But she's not. No, neither are you. Believe me, I appreciate the offer, and once you've learned your trade, I will give you a shot, okay? Yeah. What else? Hey, Tony! Oh, I'm gonna keep an eye on you today. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> gonna give this place a class. Mr. Campana. Hey! How you doing? Oh, Hey, hey, why don't you do that at home, huh? There's my girl. You're looking wonderful. Fine, I'm feeling the prime of life. This is exactly the kind of medicine I need. Oh, oh, oh. oh thank you, darling. Just the smell of this place. I'll tell you, it makes a new man out of you. Yeah, when Mom finds you down here, she'll make a new man out of you, all right? Ah, don't worry about it. Listen, this young Trumbull fell across the street. He's yeah. the talk of the market here. You met him yet? His name is Lucien. He knows a lot about dog food. Well, maybe while I'm here, I can pay this Lucien a social call. You never learn, do you, Pop? Three heart attacks, and you listen to no one. Tell me, who are you going to see down there? Well, the idiot judge who wishes the court order. Well, I'll remember you in my prayers. Pray for Betty, because I get a hold of her, I'm going to wring her neck. I want you to give Charlene a big hug and kiss from her grandpa. And, uh, you give her this. It was my mother's. It's time Charlene had something nice for me. Well, I hope you have the chance to see her wearing it soon, Pop. <laughs> sure thing. You heard a case the other day involving a little girl, Charlene Campana. I thought you might want to hear another point of view. Who are you? I'm a little girl's father. I looked up in the record that you heard the case, and they they told me you're in here. Well, I can't talk to you here. I've set up an appointment with my secretary. No, ma'am, I'd like to Who talk... Who's your lawyer? He should have his head examined for allowing you to come bursting in here. I don't have a lawyer. I mean, I don't have a lawyer here. Get one. Good day. I said good day. I don't know if you have any children or not, but if you did, and a court of law did to you what your court did to me, I don't think you'd be too happy about it. If you persist in this interruption, I will call someone and have you removed. At this point, I don't care much what you do to me. I mean, you couldn't do more than you already have, stopping my little girl from being with me. Look, I have come over a thousand miles to straighten this thing out. I don't care if you came 10,000. Now, these books contain hundreds of cases just like yours. There are precedents, there are procedures, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. You're not going about this in the right way. The right way? You call what you did the right way? You acted on a petition by my ex-wife without giving me a chance to say anything. Is that the right way? You should have been in court, Mr. Campana. You're a grown man. You should have sense enough to have a lawyer in the state to protect your interests. Now, will you please leave? I have had three different lawyers, four different judges. You're the fifth. It's always the same. If we were in court, I would hold you in contempt. I am in contempt. Well, you have guts. I'll say that much for you. Now, Mr. Campana, 
There's an old saying in the law that you would do well to heed. Anybody who pleads his own case before the bench has a fool for a client. Well, this fool ain't finished yet. I could say yes, but look, here's what we'll do. We're gonna go somewhere, we'll have a soda, and we'll talk, okay? Mommy's checking in. She'll be here any minute. What I'm gonna say is not gonna take very long, sweetheart. I just want you to know something, darling. That you're my little girl, and you're always gonna be my little girl. No matter what some old judge has to say. Am I gonna be with you at all this summer? Don't get antsy pantsy. These things take time. I almost forgot something. Your grandfather told me to give you this. It was your great grandmother's, darling. Beautiful. Picture of Grandma and Grandpa. Can I wear it? Of course. Here, come in. Let me put it on you. I love it. There's Mom. Charlie, get in the car. Hello, Betty. Get in the car, I said. You do what your mommy says, okay? Just give me a kiss. Charlie, okay. get in the car. Will you lighten up? I just want to say goodbye to the kid. Better read the court order. Bye, kid. Bye, Daddy. I love you. I love you, too, Daddy. about your father. Anna, don't. Don't start that now. Sam, come on, pull up a chair and come over here. Hey. You're coming along pretty good with that, huh? Yeah. Since I stopped coming regular to the shop, it's something to fill the hours. My father used to sail in one of these. You imagine what the bay looked like? These sailing back and forth. Oh, what a sight. What did you want to see me about? I've written a will, Sam. A will? Yeah. thought uh, we ought to go over what's in it. I'm going to do the same with John. <laughs> what good's a will going to do me now? you still got a lot of years left in them bones. Not if he continues to live like a fool down there working in the market every day. It's enough to break my heart. Anna, it's just for a couple of days. Look at it. You have no business in the market. It's just what I figured. Hmm? John's got it all. What do you mean, John's got it all? 30% is a hefty chunk. Well, not if John has 40. He may as well have it all. But then he is the oldest, isn't he? He always did get the biggest slice. Sam, that's not worthy of you. Well, it's always been that way. I worked in the business for seven years. Did I get a partnership? John's been a partner for five years. John worked with me for 15 years before I gave it to him. Pop, I had a lot more to offer than John did. Don't throw your education at me. 
I could have a PhD and it wouldn't mean anything to you. Ever since that time, you sent me to the bank with the daily receipts and I lost them. That was a long time ago. What were you, 11 years old? Yes, but ever since then, John's got it all. But those goons took that money away from you. You had nothing to do with that. Sometimes I think that's really why you sent me to college. You didn't trust me. Sam, you don't know what you're talking about. I'll go one further. I think you're even glad I went with Magnum. Yeah, you think somehow I'll screw up their operation. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't change some of your methods of operation, Magnum Foods is gonna roll over you like you never existed. And it's gonna be me who shows them how. You've been looking for a way, Sam, for years to push me down. You couldn't do it. So now you wanna take on your brother. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. After he bloodies your nose and breaks a few of your bones, then you'll come back where you belong, and you'll help build a business that you can pass on to your sons and your sons' sons. Don't you place your bet too early. Sam! Samuel! I got a new lawyer, and he's gonna try to straighten things out. But I will tell you all about it tomorrow, because right now I'm just gonna take off my clothes and get into bed, okay? Okay. Ah. You're tired, huh? Yeah, just a little. Oh, I feel good. So, how is everything? Oh, fine. Your dad's back in harness again. You ought to see him. Uh, he's strutting around like a cockbird. I bet Mom's put to be tied. No, let's put him in are you okay? I'm better now. You stole my rocket from Gibraltar. You want to make love to a rocket Gibraltar? All I want to do is place an order, Mr. Harmon. If you can handle it, fine. If you can't, then just say so. Suppose I give you a dollar more in the tray. Well, it's going to cut my margin, but I'll make it up in volume. Yeah. Hmm? A dollar fifty, then. Two dollars a tray? No, no. If you can get it, good luck to you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. What's the matter? Uh, five in a row, Pop, and they all sing the same song. We want crabs, we've got to pay the piper. Lucian's really throwing it around. I mean, we need crabs, Pop. So? We'll go crabbing. Look, I'm going to work the street. I mean, somebody's got to have crabs at the right price. I think the time has come for me to have a talk with Mr. Trumbull. Tell Johnny I'll be back in a little while. You've got a visitor on the way. Johnny. No, not Johnny. Mr. Campana. This is a rare pleasure. Please sit down and make yourself most comfortable. And please call me Lucian. Otto, I think Mr. Campana would like something to drink. Cream de menthe, isn't it? Who told you? <laughs> Everybody in the market knows about you. You're a living legend. The original king crab. I don't drink as much as I used to. It's doctor's orders, my heart. Won't take it, he says. But you're still active in the business. I understand you hold 75% of the stock. Your son Johnny holds the rest. Well, I'm not as active as I used to be, but more active than the doctor would like. 
Still, I managed to get my two beds in. Suppose an offer to buy was presented a campaign of seafood. You would be in on the discussion. I assume that's a hypothetical question. Not for sale. I've got a lot of respect for people like you. You came into this market with nothing but determination and built a business as second to none. Quite frankly, I don't think that could be done today. Depends. You remember this company the way it was before Magnum took over? I'd like to show you what we've done. I'd like that. Get more ice over here. Hey, Fred! Fred's out back talking to Charlie. Who's on screen? Sam's job. Take shrimp, for example, Pop. You and the other brokers on the street only know roughly how many pounds of shrimp you have on hand at a given time. Sure, sometimes you might be off by 500,000, 800,000, a million pounds. So what? We always manage to make a pretty good profit. OK, but now, with all this hardware, we know the poundage of shrimp we have with an error of less than one percentage point. And we don't have to tell you what that one adjustment did to our performance statement. How it increased our borrowing power, our cash flow, our credit rating. You know what your credit rating is, Mr. Campana? Uh, I don't bother with such garbage. You have a good credit rating. You can borrow all the money you want, so long as you have a collateral to back it up. But you couldn't get an unsecured loan at any bank in this town. Is that right? It's the same story up and down the street. In an age of credit, many of the old firms have limited their growth because instead of borrowing money when they want to modernize their operations or buy stock where they... They take it out of their personal savings. You name any firm in the street, and I'll tell you his credit rating and why it's so low. Is that part of your modern operation? Sticking your nose in other people's business. And we've got something else we'd like to show you. What is this? It's a proposal to buy Campana seafood, Pop. What? What is this? I think you should read it. You young pup, who the hell do you think you're talking to? Before you were born, I knew the man who had this business. We knew each other's prices, but we knew when to draw the line. We never sought out brother against brother. Blood against blood. Pop, I wanted to do this. Nobody coaxed me over here. No, not coaxed. Lured. You saw the top of the basket, my son. You saw gadgets. You saw technology. That's what you saw. Technology. Never mind that underneath was garbage. This is what you can do with your technology. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to take over the market. Men spent their whole lives building a business to pass on to their sons. You have the goal, the goal to come in here and think that you can just have what we spent a lifetime putting together. Brother against brother, father against son. Doesn't make any difference to you. I'll tell you something. I saw them use dynamite and literally blow a man's business to bits. That didn't stop the man. He just opened up around the corner. What they couldn't do with their dynamite, you think you can do with your technology? Well, you're a fool. And you, you, you're a bigger fool. These are men here. Men! They'll fight you to... Oh! 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 Bastard, you, you... Loosen his clothes, Sam. I'll call an ambulance. I want to get the same price. Would you charge me Chuck. for hotels the last time, right? You better get over to Pankham right away. Your father's collapsed. Sam, what happened? He's dead. What was he doing in here? He came to see Trumbo. Why'd you let him in here? You knew! We have called for a priest and an ambulance. Why 
Why didn't you listen to me? Mr. Campana, you have my deepest sympathy. Your father didn't suffer. It hit him fast. It was all over in a moment. Anything I can do, anything at all. I'll, I'll take him. What are you doing? I said I'll take him. What do you mean you'll take him? I'm taking him across the street where he belongs. No, he belongs right here until he's been given last rites. He'd rather rot in hell than be given last rites in this place. John, you're not moving again. Get out of my way, Sam, or I'll go right through you. Not even cold in his grave. And Sam hands me a manila folder containing a proposal for Magnum to buy us out. Right after the funeral. But that wasn't enough. My own mother asks me to consider it seriously. You know, I'm just glad that Pop isn't alive to see this. The hell of it is. If Mom and Sam put this talk together, I mean, Mom's 30 and Sam's 30, they could sell this place out from under me in a minute. Oh, your mother would never do that. Oh, wouldn't she? Vicky's been going over Pop's estate. Go ahead. Tell him what he left her. After everything's settled, she's lucky if she ends up with 30,000. Well, she never worked a day in her life. No pension, no social security to speak of. What would you do if someone dangled $100,000 in your face? She'll have an income from the business. That's what Johnny's been trying to tell her. Sam's almost got her convinced that we're just about to go under. That doesn't sound like your mother. Well, I've got an appointment with Lucian tomorrow morning. We'll see. Come in, John. I've asked Sam to join us. I didn't think you'd mind. No, not at all. Sit down, please. I'm real glad you came over here to see me, John. I have felt terrible ever since your father's death. Some people are blaming me. And I want to assure you that the way I dealt with your father is exactly the same way I deal with everybody. It's business. That's all just business. Now, I know my approach is new, it's different, it's less personal, it's more scientific, more objective, but it's no less effective. And some people can't see that. Do you understand me, John? Sure, Mr. Trumbull. Yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Okay, I, I presume you're here to talk over my proposal. Yes. If you're serious, I can offer you one hell of an exciting career with Magnum Seafood. Well, I'm listening. I need men with imagination, John. Men who live for what they do. Now, we catch fish. We sell fish. We process fish. We serve fish in restaurants. We grind it up into fertilizer. We package it. We freeze it. We can it. We bread it. We, we even use it for collateral. I need men who eat, sleep, breathe, and think fish. And there's money in it. Great big money. But more than that, if you accept my offer, you'll be exposed to more information in one month than you've absorbed in a lifetime. Now, are you ready for that kind of challenge? What kind of money are we talking about? 400,000 for the business. You come to work for me Monday morning at 50,000 per year, and there'll be stock options and a great big bonus around Christmas. It's a lot of money. And we could get the 400,000 in cash, isn't that right, Mr. Trump? Pennies, nickels, dimes, any way you want it. And we'll work out a deal so Uncle Sam don't see a nickel. That's the same deal you offered my father, isn't it? It's what killed him, isn't it, Sam? Well, now, John, let's not get off on some sentimental tangent. We're here to discuss business. Look, I don't think I'm that naive to blame you for his death. That was just business. See, when you talk business, Mr. Trumbull, product doesn't matter. You know, today it's seafood, tomorrow it's fiberglass resins, the day after that it's synthetic fuels. But business for that old man was crabs. And when you laid that piece of paper on the table, to you it was just a proposal. To him it was an insult. John, as I tried to explain... You killed my father, Lucian. 
And Sam, you helped him do it. Oh, for crying out loud, John. And since my father already told you what you can do with that piece of paper, I won't waste words. I'll let you gentlemen go back to business as usual. Keep after him, Sam. I want his name on that piece of paper. I've already told Magnum Campana Seafood's in our pocket. I'll do it, Mr. Trombo. Your arms oh, off. Please don't hurt me. Do you work oh. for Trumbo? I don't know, no Trumbo. You run for Sam? Yes, yes, on my shoulders. Come on. Now look, kid. Be careful. I'm going to feed your arms to the crabs. No, come on. Let me alone. Now listen to me. How much money do they pay you to get my ticket? Twenty-five a week. Oh, come on. Don't make me a cripple. I ought to break off both your arms. I'm going to give you $50 a week to get me information on Trump. Now, I don't want you to pull any tickets. I just want you to jot down what he's selling for and get it to me. See, that's 75 bucks a week. It's not bad for a 12-year-old kid. How am I going to get $25 from Trump? We're working for you. And I thought you were a smart kid. You're not going to tell the idiot you're working for me. I'm going to give you information to feed to him. And he's going to get you a ticket. You're going to be a double agent. I can't hear you. Okay. Now, get out of here, and don't let on that I caught you. Go. Hey, Freddy, lock that back door, will you? Hey, what are you doing here? Where you been? I just took a walk to get rid of the stench of magnum fish, but I see it followed me across the street. All right, all right. I'll come right to the point. John, you just turned down a honey of a deal. I want you to reconsider. Wait, wait, wait a second. No, you, you want me to reconsider. Hey, who are we kidding? Lucian who wants me to reconsider. Lucian sent you over here. I mean, he tells you when to sit, when to jump, when to think. Hey, Sam, he owns you. What did it cost him, huh? House, car? How much did he have to pay you? The chance to get out from under you. That's all it took. All right. Either you sell out to Lucian and come on board, or I'm going to sell this place anyway. <laughs> you're 30%. You're going to sell me out, huh? 60%. This is a power of attorney to sell Mama's part of the business. Let me see that. Lies that you have to feed her to make her sign that. She's a better businesswoman than you give her credit for, John. Carol, 
Call Magnum. Tell them to pick up their trash. Vicky, please, calm oh, down. Oh, tell me, was it they brought him here? Oh, my God, it's not a heart attack, no, is it? No, Vicky, listen. Sam and Johnny had a fight. I hit him. You hit him? I don't know. I grabbed a hook and I hit him. You hit your brother with a hook? What in the world were you fighting about? Vicky, it was business. Business? Is that how you conduct business at Magnum? With a hook? You don't understand. What room is he in? Oh, never mind. I'll find it myself. Yes. Is he all right? I didn't talk to him. They gave him something to make him sleep. Well, what did the doctor say? They said he's in a lot of pain. I'm going in. brother was only supposed to use that if you agreed to the deal. If you didn't want him to use it, why didn't you give it to me? I wouldn't be here now. Johnny, I didn't, I didn't see the harm. Are you the bookkeeper for Campana? No, no, I'm uh, Mrs. Campana. So where's Johnny? I got a load of crabs on my truck. John's in the hospital. Uh, aren't the journeymen around? I haven't seen anybody. Look, when I went with John, I told him I don't like hanging around here. You can get trouble hanging around here. Is your truck around the back? Yeah. What are you going to do? Hey, I need a couple of your journeymen to unload this truck. Everybody. I got ten barrels of hard crabs for John. John's in the hospital. If you can just be patient for a minute, I'll unload you. You? Yes. I'm Mrs. Campana. Well, let's get started. I go out of my way to keep personalities out of my business. But what happened yesterday can't very well be treated routinely. What does that mean? 
Business is fluid, Sam. Conditions change overnight. Yesterday, a campaign of seafood was well worth what we agreed on. Today, it's a shambles. Have you looked across the street this morning? Have you seen the mess over there? Some woman trying to sling crab baskets around? It's disgusting. Now, today, you couldn't get a nickel for campana anywhere on the street. Are you backing out on our deal? Oh, that deal is dead, Sam. That's not why I called you in here. Well, what are you trying to say? What need do you feel for me now, Sam? Are you firing me? Your brother was a formidable opponent. You came pretty close to balancing that. With him out of the way, what do I need you for? The soft crab market's ours for the taking. Not if I go back across the street, it isn't. You're too smart for that, Sam. The days of the small operators are over, and you know it. Besides, after what you did, I doubt if they'd have you. John's in the hospital, but we can't have this. Nothing can move. You've got to move everything inside. Leave a path. Look, officer, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can. Do either of you guys know uh, where John's journeyman are? Didn't they tell you? Tell me what? Magnum hired him yesterday. They're all across the street. <laughs> what am I going to do with all this stuff? No, I don't know, but you can't leave it here. I'll give you half an hour. Beep, beep, beep. What's going on? Oh, Kevin, I'm glad to see your face. What the hell's going on? Johnny and Sam had a fight. Johnny's in the hospital. All the journeymen have quit. They've gone over to Magnum. All right, all right, well, one is... thing at a time. One thing at a time. What's with John? Johnny's hurt really bad. The doctors tell me he's going to be all right, but I don't know. I have really made a mess of this city. The whole place is a shambles. Yeah, listen, we'll straighten it out. We'll straighten it out, OK? You up to it, huh? Okay, you go in the office and make out the tickets for these drivers, and I'll move the stuff in. Huh? <laughs> Come on, you guys, give me a hand, huh? I'm taking you to see your daddy. Mama and Patna, what are you doing here? What are you doing with Charlene? My father needs her. He's in the hospital. He's been hurt. I'm taking her to see him. I'll bring her back in a few days. You wait a minute. You're not taking her anywhere. There's a court order. Charlene, get out of the I'm cab. taking her. If you want to stop me, you can call a policeman. Airport driver. Yes, sir. Bright and early Monday morning. Well, what can I tell you? It's an early market. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, thanks. All right, now we're talking. If we get all the crabs everybody's promised us on Monday, we're going to make Mr. Lucian Trumbull sit up and take notice. I think you're beginning to like this business. Yeah. Why not? How's Johnny coming along? Oh, he's much better. I mean, he's still in a lot of pain, but they got him up yesterday. He walked around a little bit. They're going to want to keep him another week, but, uh, oh, you know Johnny. He is dying to get out of there. I'm going to go down and uh, get some coffee. How about you? You want some? Oh, I'll go get it. Oh, Bye. no, Carol, really, listen. I need the air. You sit here. Do magic. Make those books show a profit, huh? <laughs>
Jumbo sold for 14, primes 13, no hotels. Female crabs went for 28, males 20. See you, Otto. One black coffee, Hanson. Thanks. Listen, um, you're gonna have to let Carol go. What? She's on two payrolls, Oz and Lucian Trumbulls. I've been watching her for the last week. Every time you leave her alone in the office, she calls out. I caught her just now, talking to Otto across the street. She was telling him our prices. No. What else? And now a look at the major storm system expected in the Tidewater area. Small craft warnings are up on the bay. I got you uh, south, coffee. South oh, thank you. And a roll. Thanks, Vicky. The storm off Cape Hatteras is expected to hit here Saturday. Gale force winds of 50 miles per hour and above are expected. Present temperature, 58 degrees. Barometer reads 30.01 and falling. Now back to music. Sounds like a storm moving in. It's a lot closer than you think. How does it feel? Oh, uh, Carol? Are you crazy? Uh, somebody come up behind you. Oh, you're, hurting you. you're hurting me. You're hurting me. You've been dying, Steve. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You have put him in the house. I think I swear I did. Oh, you're doing this. Get her off of me. She's so crazy. She's I ought to be doing it to you myself. I heard you talking to Otto. Get out of here. I'm sorry. Get out of here. I didn't know what's going to go this far. Get out of here. Shut up. Get out of here. What's the matter, ladies? Haven't you ever smelled fish? Charlene? Oh, you beautiful child. Hi, Vicky. Can we see my daddy now? We were waiting for you to come. I have permission to take her inside. How did you get her here? I took a plane down there and I got her. <laughs> you didn't have to go to court or anything? Life is too short to worry about things like that. You're taking an awful risk. What are they going to do to a grandma, hmm? <laughs> well, sweetheart, I think it's time we surprised your father. You're exactly what he needs. Get behind me. Don't say a word. And we'll say hello. Hi, sweetheart. How you feeling? Just like a newspaper that's just been rained on. That's how I feel. No, oh, you poor thing. I have a surprise for you. You think you're up to it? Hi, Daddy. Oh, you little dickens. How did you get her here? Don't ask any questions. I thought she'd be good medicine. Does your back hurt real bad, Daddy? No, now that you are here, I never felt better in my life. Hey, give me another kiss, huh? I heard about this door, Mr. Crockett. OK. Thanks, anyway. How are you holding up? <sighs> All the producers who promised me soft shell crabs on Friday have either been wiped out or buttoned up until the storm passes. I've called every crab shedder in Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina. There is not a fin to be found. Well, there's one consolation, Vicky. Lucian can't get crabs either. I'll see you in a little while. Shocks. You gore any Italians lately, huh? How far gone are you? Why, you want to go a few rounds? <laughs> hey, I've been a friend of your family for a long time, huh? You know, I sure hate to see the campana business go down the drain. Right now, you might be the only guy to prevent that. Well, haven't you heard? I'm not in the family anymore. In fact, 
I am the most persona non grata man in the market. Not even Magnum wants me. Now, if you will just excuse me, I have some business to attend to. All right. And we're going to take a little ride. I really don't want to be here. Yeah, I know, Sam. I know. I don't want to see him. Hey, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Believe me, huh? Who's there? Brought you something, John. I hope you brought the cards, because you're not leaving there until I win my money back. I brought Sam. Get him out of here. Yeah, maybe I better go. You shouldn't get excited. Yeah, look, look, I don't like this any better than the two of you do. There's a business at stake here. Vicky's down in the market working her heart out. She doesn't know what to do. I don't know what to do. He certainly won't listen to anything I say. Teddy, I swear to you, get him out of here or I'll kill him. John, what good is this going to do? You're trying to correct a lifetime here, Teddy. Look, I'm sorry as hell that I hit him. But it would be the same if I hadn't. Teddy, you're no friend of mine to do this. You're wasting your time, Teddy. I'm leaving. You know, if your father could see this, he'd turn over in his grave. My father? Hell, he's the one who's responsible for all this. You leave the old man out of this. No. Wait, it's all right. There's a few things to be said, and now is as good a time to say them as any. Then I'm leaving town. There's the door. Our beloved father played us off against each other. Sure, he started that when we were kids. No two kids ever worked harder for their father's approval. And just when one of us thought he had it, he'd snatch it away, give it to the other one. That old man was a saint. Was he? Do you call throwing a fortune away on craps and the ponies the actions of a saint? You got every penny you ever needed. I worked 12 hours a day to put you through school. Well, how come he never sent you to school? If he was such a great fishmonger, such a saint, couldn't he do without you long enough for you to get an education? I got an education. The only kind of education that means anything. When he sent you to school, I made up my mind to be the best crab man that ever was or ever could be. But above all else, Never to give you the chance to use your education in this business. That is exactly what I'm saying. He had us at each other's throats. Listen, the only thing that kept me going in that school was the thought of someday coming back into the business and making you look lousy in his eyes. I never looked at it that way. He was a hard man to impress. Oh, tell me about it. If there was some way that I could take the pain that you've suffered under myself, I'd do it in a minute. But it wouldn't mean anything unless you understood what brought the two of us to the point of wanting to kill each other. Quite honestly, I don't think you have the stomach for that. I'm sorry, Teddy, this won't work. Sam! You couldn't face up to him when he was alive! He was too much man for you! I didn't know you were here, Mama. I'm sorry if you heard all that. If you leave now, you'll be running from your father for the rest of your life. Ma. Where were you when all this was happening? You saw it, didn't you? You saw the way he set us against each other. He knew it was a hard world. He knew what it took. Maybe he went too far. Maybe. I hate my brother. My brother hates me. There's no maybe here. Your father loved you. I know that. He lived for his two sons. I don't want to hurt you, Mama. Sam. Where will you go? I don't know. Your place is here with us. Everything you are is here with us. Not for long. Magnum will have the business. Not if you fight for it. Ma, now don't you do this to yourself. I know you, Sam. You won't let anybody take what's yours. The time has come to fight. It's impossible to beat them the way John operates. They'd grind us into the dirt. Then you have to teach him. You have to have the strength to teach your brother the right way. I can't even talk to him. Can you beat this Lucian? It wouldn't be easy. Then do it. You wait here. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. No, 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 Ted. You better go, Ma. No, my place is here with you now. You're in with Sam. Sell the business, and I'll even give you my share. 
When we get out of here, I'll open up around the corner. We're all in this together, whichever way it goes. You and Sam and me, we're partners. I'm out of it. Are you doubting the wisdom of the father you love so much? He made us partners. He must have been out of his mind. No, Johnny, he knew what he was doing. You're so much like him. You always had to be so proud, so strong, just like him. But this is a different world than when your father started in the business. One man cannot do it alone. Michael knew that. Sam was always your favorite, wasn't he? No. No, Filio Mio. If it seemed that way, it was only to balance your father's attention to you. Now I'm going to bring your brother in. There will be peace in this house. just come from the hospital. He wants to help. Help? If it weren't for him, we wouldn't be in this mess. You'll have plenty of time to hate me after we get the business back on its feet. Okay? Let's get to work. You said you found something. What have you got? You have the gall to come in here after what you did and try and take over. Vicky, we need him. If this is some trick of Lucian's to put this place out of business, I swear, I'll put a hook in your heart. Fair enough. What have you got? I found his contract with a guy in South Carolina to free soft crabs. Floyd Redmond? Yes. <laughs> How did you know? You came to Magnum first. Well, I checked with the Weather Bureau, and the storm hasn't touched South Carolina. This contract's for frozen crabs. So, we tell him to stop freezing, send them to us live on the hoof, and then we have fresh crabs. Lucian doesn't. And what are you gonna do when the storm passes? Pray for another storm. I didn't get that far. I don't know. I'm doing the best I can. Listen, the only way to hurt Magnum is to make their computers print red ink. That's it. Sam, I think we should at least try it. Our cash flow is down to silch. Well, John got a pretty good price from Floyd and these crabs. What if we put frozen crabs on the market now? No, no, wait a minute. I think I've got it. What if Lucian thinks that we're putting frozen crabs on the market now? <laughs> During fresh season? We put out the word that we're buying frozen crabs, what's Lucian gonna do? He's gonna think we're nuts. I don't think so. He's so committed to making Magnum number one, he can't afford to let us get even an inch ahead. I think he'll buy frozen crabs. There are not that many on the market. We hold most of them. Exactly. Lucian buys frozen crabs from Redmond, not knowing that there are. It's at double the price, maybe more. Takes delivery on the crabs, tries to move them, and we zap him with the fresh ones. He won't be able to move a fin. And then all of his money is tied up in frozen crabs until the fresh season's over. Well, a lot of it anyway, enough to make Magnum be all over Lucian for his cash flow. Well, what do you think, Teddy? Play the hand. There's one flaw. If Lucian sees the three of us put this plan into effect, he won't give it a second thought. No, the only way to make this work is if Lucian sees John back in here and on his feet. He has a lot of respect for John. Sam, you're playing with all I've got. Johnny and this business. And even if it does work, what have we gained? Time and enough capital to maneuver. How are we going to get him here without hurting him? Leave it to me. Dr. Surrend, Dr. K. Surrend, please report your emergency immediately. Dr. K. Surrend.
Excuse me. Could you tell me where the public telephones are? Mm -hmm. Right down? Okay. Thank you. Who's risen from the dead? You know what they say about keeping a good man down. Yeah, I know what they say. I want him watched like a hawk. I want to know everything he does, every move he makes. I got him nailed. And that's how I intend to keep him. Did he see you, John? I'm not sure. I, I saw him talking to Otto. He looked this way, but I'm just not sure. Yeah, we'll have to assume that he did. Look, let me just, let me just stay here for a minute, honey. He's in a lot of pain. We never should have brought him here. To hell with Lucian. Let's take him back to the hospital. No, 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 no. Not yet, not yet. You've got to go see the kid. Johnny! Look, this is going to work. We're not even sure that he saw you. Go see the kid. Johnny Wilson, the deal. I've got paid. You know Johnny's been in the hospital. Here's the money that he owes you. Not so fast. I want you to tell your friends at Magnum that Campana is buying frozen crabs. And I want you to give them these shipping tickets. I ain't telling them nothing. You listen to me, young man. I'm real sorry you got yourself in the middle of this. But you pass this information, or I'm going to forget you're only about 12 years old and treat you like the little hustler you really are. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. Huh. 
Johnny's flipped to something. He's buying frozen crabs. Is there any money in frozen? Sure, but the better houses won't touch him. Not during fresh season. Well, maybe Johnny knows something we don't. Buy every frozen crab on the market. It's a mistake, Mr. Trumbull. Ride out the storm, wait for the fresh market to reestablish, and you'll make money. I suppose Cam Panna cons the buyers into taking frozen. He's back on his feet. Well, buy, Otto, and let every buyer on the East Coast know we've got him. How you doing, Floyd? It's Sam. I you were with Magnum. Well, now, he got over that. Now, this is Johnny. What can we do for you, Floyd? I just got a call from Magnum. They want to buy frozen crabs. They're your crabs. What do I do with them? What's the price? Fifteen for jumbos, ten for primes, and seven for hotels. You sell them babies. Hey, Floyd, listen, one more thing. Stop freezing. I want every crab you've got live on the hoof for the next several days. We're sending a truck down to pick them up. They'll be ready. Okay, yeah, we'll see you, Floyd. Lucian took the bait. He took the bait, he took the hook, he took the anchor. <laughs> but what are you standing there for? Get out of here and get that wagon rolling to Carolina. Uh-huh, not until he's taking you back to the hospital. If you think I'm leaving now... Morning, Mr. Trumbull. Auto. Moving a lot of lobster tail and shrimp. Well, how about soft crabs? Not a spin. Are you telling the buyers we have them, aren't you? Well, they knew we would have them, but why should they buy frozen from us when they can get fresh from Campana? What? Campana's got fresh soft crabs this morning. Where would Campana get fresh soft crabs? Knowing Johnny, I'd say he just waved his hand and they appear. I think I've heard enough about Mr. King Crab. I may have been in this market for only six months, but I know when I've been set up. If you want to be a good fishmonger, take off your tie. Good day, Mr. Trump. Look, if you're gonna stay in the business, you gotta learn how to play the game. No, Come know. on. I know how to play. I just don't want to. I'm Got not a gambler. Ten no. bucks, huh? Chicken? Ten bucks? All right, ten bucks. Come on. One. Six. Oh, oh, Come on, Wait a second. <laughs> My kid brother. I think he's been hustling me for the last 20 years. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, ooh. Mom, it smells terrific. You two decided on a name yet? Michael, if it's a boy. Well, wait a second. I was going to use Michael. For what? Well, I don't know. I thought we'd talk about it. You two can use the name one. Vicky, I said we'd talk. You have to do more than talk. Well, you gotta make allowances for John, Ma. He's not too bright. Oh, oh. my smart college boy. All right, then. So when do we start computerizing? You know, I don't think we should start with computers just yet. First, Am I concentrate me? on standardizing our accounting procedures, developing our marketing techniques. I've got the markets. I mean, we've got the markets. 
Look, if we're going to stay ahead of Magnum, we've got to be streamlined like them. Cart before the horse, John. First, we have to expand our field of operations, growth. And that means marketing. Sam, computers. Marketing, John. Now, who's running this business around here anyway? We're both running it. Remember? There's an old Italian saying for this. Questa minestra, la finestra. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>